so much for being here and thank you Desiree Grace for your question of how to do an Epsom salt soak for the orchids, not for us humans, even though that is very beneficial for us humans as well. But for the orchids, it is just as beneficial and that's why I am going to do this video based on your question and we're going to start with A, B, C and 1, 2, 3 because... Let's start with, don't worry about the pH your water is starting with. None of this here is here to overwhelm and make you think, oh my goodness, this is more complicated than it really is. So we are only going to need our pH meter at the end, okay? But it is important to get a good understanding of the concentration, how much Epsom salts are going to be in our final bucket of water that we have a TDS meter total dissolved solids because we need to know don't worry about the numbers going down that's because I removed it from the water we need to know what is the baseline of the total dissolved solids parts per million in the water that we are going to be putting Epsom salts into so that we can then deduct that from the final result in order to get the parts per million that we want to soak our orchids with and not get a wrong reading. Now, if you're using tap water and it is anywhere below 100 parts per million, fantastic. Anywhere below 200 parts per million, I would say that's okay for a blitz soak, but we're getting to the point where we don't know what is in the tap water, but we want to focus on the Epsom salts, which is magnesium getting into our orchids. So we want to have as clean water as possible with the lowest parts per million in that water so that we are really, really targeting the magnesium to get into the orchids and not everything else that our tap water may have taking away from an effective soak. That is why the cleanest water you have still measure the parts per million so that you can remember that amount. Ours in our case here is 14 parts per million. That is our base parts per million. Now we are going to add Epsom salts into a container. In my case, when I do an Epsom salt soak, I always fill up a bucket. And because it is the grow season, my aim is to not put more than 100 parts per million into my bucket, meaning that based on what we're about to do, there should be 114 parts per million in the bucket total. That includes the 14 that we're starting out with plus the 100 that we want to add as Epsom salts magnesium. So I'm going to use those two interchangeably. The next thing is your Epsom salts will come in granules, cheap stuff from the supermarket, nothing fancy, anything that is for us humans to soak our tired muscles in, and they will come in granules comme ça. These will dissolve in cold water, no problem, it just takes such a long time, and well, who's got time for that? Now, normally, all I do is take a pinch, okay, that much. But seeing as my pinch may be bigger than your pinch, I am going to go with, let's say, a quarter of a teaspoon as my base, and I'm just going to take half, so an eighth of a teaspoon like that, and I'm going to put it into a container that can take hot water without cracking because that is going to make our Epsom salts granules dissolve much, much faster. And this is also, for me, the cleanest water that I have that I'm using, which is RO water. Please, once again, it can be tap water in your case based on how clean your tap water is. Whatever the lowest parts per million water you have, you use that. And I've boiled myself some of that just to speed up the dissolving process because this can take quite some time if it's in cold water and there's no need to be waiting around. Now, our Epsom salts is completely dissolved but we have absolutely no idea how many parts per million are in this container. I can guess <laughs> probably about 2,000 plus parts per million. Yep. And I will not be using my TDS meter to try and measure it to say, oh, here's how much we've got because the TDS meter is going to go bonkers. It's going to show up numbers that don't actually, it just can't register. So that means this concentration is super, super high. And we don't want to now just pour it all in one go into the bucket. This is where it gets a little bit of like, oh my goodness, 
the things we do for the orchids, all right? But every dosage, be it a pinch or an eighth of a teaspoon that you use to get dissolved, could have a different concentration to it. So ideally, what you want to do is be quite meticulous about pouring it in and then seeing how much, how high the TDS is. And I'm not joking. That is how I do mine. Because if I get heavy handed, I still want 100 parts per million, which means I need more water. I need to dilute it down. And from there on in, everything becomes a little bit more awkward because the next step would be pH. We want to keep it as simple as possible and as less of a headache as possible. So, a good stir. I know, that little drop from that container. <laughs> we might already be at 100 parts per million. Sorry, 114 parts per million. We may be a few parts per million off. So, it helps to switch it on. Let's try this and see how much we've got going. That's 44 parts per million. In total, we have to deduct 14 parts per million, which was our start. So when it comes to the quantity of Epsom salts that we actually have in this bucket right now, in truth, we have exactly 30 parts per million in this bucket, okay? Because we've deducted the 14 parts per million from what we started out with. That was a tiny, tiny quantity that you saw me pour in. Tiny. We're going to give it another little bit of a shot. Comme ça. And this is where people may say, well, you know, oh my goodness, if you see the, anybody doing this for the first time, you're probably thinking, really? Every time an Epsom salt soak comes up, this is what's going on? On my patio, yes, because I'm going with the cheap stuff and I'm doing it bit by bit because I don't always have exact measurements. So now, let's see. We've done our second little application. Let's go and have a look at how much it has increased. So we are at 88, 89. Push comes to shove. We can throw in one or two more granules and let them dissolve. So we're at 91. Now, if... For example, at this stage, we don't want to faff with the hot water again. There is so minute amount left to raise it up. I'm just going to add like three granules to get myself to the point where I want to be. If it is exact to 100 parts per million, it really doesn't matter here nor there. But if it gets to 200 parts per million and we completely overdo it and overshoot the target of 114, then yes, we are in trouble and we will have to divvy up the bucket and dilute everything to bring it down. So we don't want to get to that point and that's why adding it gradually makes it so much easier because now we have to test the pH. So this is what is important because the pH now before we do any adjustment, needs to be measured so that we can see how much pH down we will have to add to get to the ideal pH range of 6.5 throughout to 7.0, where the magnesium is best absorbed by the orchids. 6.5 to 7.0 is superb for a blitz soak, and what I mean by that Blitz soak, meaning you're pouring the Epsom salts into the pot and soaking the pot for about 30 minutes. That's a blitz soak. If this solution were to go into my reservoirs, into the pot, and not do a blitz soak, that is also an option. I will put it in at 6.0. That would be my target pH because the Lekka will then also raise the pH while the Epsom salt solution is still in its pot is being absorbed and then that'll bring it up to the ideal solution of 6.5 to 7. Now you see my pH is at 7. It is ready to use. However, that is not always the case. Sometimes my pH will get stuck at 7.8. Then I use pH down. pH down is super super highly concentrated. The reason I use this as opposed to a lemon, which is also an acid of course, is because I can dose it better. It's not going to clash. A lemon has potassium in it. One drop, I kid you not, one drop. A lemon has potassium in it. I'm doing an Epsom salt soak. Potassium has no business being in my solution. So we'll give that a stir. 
and then see what that one drop of pH down did to our pH reading, if anything, because our little measurement gadgets here aren't that precise. But we've got 6.9 now, but that was just for demonstration purposes. I could go all the way down to 6.5 if I wanted to. Now, if I was too heavy handed with the pH down, and for the Blitz Soak, I went lower than 6.5 pH. There is an option to correct that without having to start all over again. And that is using pH up. Either you have a brand that has pH down and a separate bottle from the same brand that has pH up. Or as in my case, I've got silicon. It's a pH up that I use if my pH has dropped a little bit too low. Many people also swear by bicarbonate of soda. I do not use this because of the same reason that I do not use lemon. I want to target the magnesium and the magnesium only. This will add other components. I don't want that. Same as with the lemon. It has potassium in it. I don't want that. I want just magnesium. So what I do is take silicon and I kid you not, also only one drop of the same will raise, oops, anyway more than one drop, <laughs> which is going to shoot that pH up really, really high, but it'll work for demonstration purposes. But it is also concentrated and it is a pH up that, you know, has a bit of silicon in it. It's not going to do much difference here nor there with my magnesium soak. But again, I am not putting in anything household that I can't really control, whereas a little touch of silicon for the orchids is never a bad thing. And normally I only need one drop, but I squeeze the pipette a little bit too hard. And let's see how high our pH is going to go from here on in. All right, instead of watching me wiggle these gadgets around even more, I took a picture. It is now at 8 pH. Just the pH up the amount that I put in made that much of a difference. Now we can do the swings and roundabouts with magnesium with the right pH, not indefinitely, but maybe tweak the pH if we get it wrong once or twice. If we don't get it right by that time, I highly recommend you start again because by adding more of the pH down to get the pH right and then oops, I got too low. Now we're adding something else to get it up and oops, that was too high. Now we're going back down with a pH down. You get my point. The constant adjusting, it'll only be that safe for so long. Now, if I get it wrong after the third try and my pH and I'm just not, you know, I'm having a bad day. Why am I not nailing this on the first go around? I start again. My patio plants will benefit from a bucket of water that basically I will not be using for my orchids. It is all a little bit of a fiddle. I admit that totally. For me, there's nothing like, okay, I'm going to take one pinch. I'm going to add two drops and I do that all the time I do a Blitz Epsom salt soak. It doesn't work for me that way. It works for my fertilizer that way, but not Epsom salts. And the same with the parts per million of your starting water. It will not always be the same. So know that when you're heading into doing an Epsom salt soak, don't stress, take your time. Know that it's gonna be a bit of a fiddle, but you know what? One day it's gonna be like, whoa, that worked on the first go around and hey, from there on in, you get a much better feel of literally the quantities. But I never ever do not measure my parts per million to start with and then my pH at which I want the solution to go into the pot. My parts per million as I move through adding more and more and more of the diluted Epsom salts solution, that I do keep measuring, keep measuring because just staying in control of the minute quantities as you add more and more into the bucket, it makes life so much easier in the long run instead of going, yikes, now I need more water, I have to dilute my solution, I have far too much of it now. And then what am I going to do with it for the next, what, month? The next time a soak comes around. I do it every month throughout the months of April through October. I don't do it in winter because my indoor environment isn't set up for good all year round growing. So I have got all this other excess water. And in my case, it's RO water. I don't want to waste it. So small increments give me a good feel of how much am I getting into my bucket, how much I've already got in my bucket, how much more I may need. If you go over 20 parts per million or 30 parts per million, that is not here nor there. These quantities are so minute that on paper they look large, but they're not. 
So if in the event by me adding two or three granules in here and letting them dissolve with the cold water takes it up from 91 that we had up to 120 and then I deduct 14 parts per million because you know that was our base number really it makes no difference whatsoever so don't think that now you've got 150 and you wanted 100 that is really not a huge jump from the quantities that we are talking about and if this looks really fiddly know that it is if you're using epsom salts it's a bit of a fiddle if you're going with straight magnesium from a hydroponic store that already gives you everything highly concentrated, and that is a product I don't have, I might have CalMag, but I don't have magnesium all on its own. But should there be a product with just magnesium, by that time, you know, one or two drops is going to give me 100 parts per million. That happens really quickly. Working with Epsom salts is a bit of a fiddle, but honestly, I guarantee you, you're going to love the process because all you'll be thinking about is the orchids you're going to be soaking and how good it's going to do them and the results you're going to get from doing that. <laughs> I hope that this was helpful as opposed to off-putting. Take your time. Don't worry if you make a mistake. You can correct it. Start again. Think of your orchids. Think of the results and enjoy the process. And I mean that wholeheartedly. And then, of course, soak the orchid for 30 minutes. Drain her out, flush her through with plain water, and wait another month, and then you do it all over again. And if you've got a controlled environment, artificial lights, proper temperatures, etc., 365 days a year, do this once a month. I hope that this was helpful, Desiree. Thank you very, very much for your question. Any questions or doubts, considerations, concerns that you may have while you are watching this video, Please address them in the comments and we can continue the dialogue below. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.